A very short video on India because the media seems to be completely wall to wall with India and its current challenges. So I thought I'd show you the actual data as usual. So here's deaths per million people. We're showing UK, we're showing Europe. Europe is tailing out because the Eastern European countries are getting their kind of first epidemic now. They missed it in April 20. And we've got India and you can see India is vastly lower right, in deaths per million, but it's certainly rising now with the viral triggering there, which is based on many complex factors. We'll show the cumulative or total rolled up mortality per million people, and we'll see the United Kingdom was particularly bad at over 1800 per million or 0.18%. Europe is somewhere in there at around 1400 per million, and India is down at a little over 100 per million. So it's vastly lower than the others because these have headed fast to endemic status, whereas India has not triggered uh, before, even with no lockdowns and no masks, they never triggered. That's the complexity of the viral. COVID from all the data looks like it's got a max range of around 0.15% or 1500 per million, approximately mortality. A bad flu would be nominally in this region here maybe 400 to 600 approximately deaths per million. So COVID's worse, no argument there. Maybe two or three times worse, uh, Professor Levitt would suggest, and I'd agree. But why are we doing what we're doing relative to a bad flu? Now that's a different question. India may indeed head up to this zone, sadly over time, may very well happen, or they may end up medium, we shall see. But what's happening in India cannot be used to terrify the endemic countries, and yet it is. So India may move up in rates over the next year or so, we shall see, but nothing we do will change that. And remember that India stayed almost clear for over a year with no lockdowns and no masks, even though they had the virus present. So the rises are viral triggering. Remember that, not the magic sauces we apply. So what's the real world mortality impact? And I'll show you the data again. What I just showed you was PCR badged with and from COVID, very misleading numbers. So Diamond Princess showed us the true numbers back in February, 2020, around 0.1 to 0.15%. And this was in a Petri ship, right? A massive incubator, they were all stuck in there. So you get to see the long-term rates likely to occur. Sweden is 0.03% after two full seasons, right? That's the actual extra mortality over what you would expect, 300 per million, uh, overwhelmingly aged. So Sweden with no lockdowns and no masks made out extremely well in the real metric. Europe is around 0.08% or 800 per million. USA is higher at 1300 per million. And there's a question mark around kind of lockdown induced lack of care. Mortality is buried in here too, but also USA has massive metabolic issues. So of course, SARS-CoV-2 is gonna hit harder uh, because it basically leverages insulin resistance and leptin resistance to cause the most havoc. Israel is very topical because of their mega rollout of meds, but they actually only were around 200 per million in total. They actually had relatively little problem in the first place, as it happens. And Taiwan, Japan, with no lockdown. Taiwan is below mortality expected, it's negative, and Japan is a little above. So between the two of them, they're around 0% in terms of actual extra mortality over normal. That's the facts. And Professor John Ioannidis had made this clear. Last October, the WHO put his paper in their bulletin and he said 0.23% or 2,300 per million is the ultimate kind of fatality rate. He updated it in April to say 0.15% and it'll keep dropping because this is antibody based and it kind of overestimates the real world impact uh, over time. And under 70 is less than 0.05% or 500 per million, which sad and all as this is, is a tiny figure. So let's go back again briefly and look at the cumulative mortality for the countries. 
COVID, as we just showed you, 0.15% is a reasonable band of where it will arrive after a couple of years. Bad flu would be more like this. So a bad flu is not as bad. Though in many countries, a bad flu has turned out to be worse. But on average, it's not as bad. But look what we're doing for this one. India may, as I said, end up moving towards this zone over time. But that won't change anything in the data. And using India as it moves through its viral triggering to terrify these countries that have reached this kind of endemic leveling off, right? That's propaganda. And to show you some propaganda, the other day this came out, COVID surge swallowing people in India. And look at the pictures they have, New York Post. But actually that picture comes from 11 months ago from a leak at a gas plant. So this is the tip of the iceberg. There's no holds barred, essentially. And to misrepresent the data and the scientific reality in this way is essentially propaganda. And sadly, we have the media on government coin all over the world and pushing the sensationalist narrative and using examples like India, right, to browbeat and terrorize their own local countries who have reached endemic status and are in a different universe, right? That can only be described as propaganda. I ask you in the comments below to suggest what else it is. So finally, one last look. Here's COVID impact, right? Around 1500 per million is a fair shot. A bad flu season would be less, right? But not massively less, maybe two or three times less. India may move on up to join these countries, but its experience currently with the sudden rise in viral triggering can never be used to terrorize these countries who are in a completely different technical scenario. And I leave you with a cartoon from the early 2000s and uh, have a look at it and kind of contemplate. We have a situation where the media now no longer does investigative reporting. They no longer challenge the narrative like the media ought do. They are reinforcing remorselessly an existing narrative that we already know and they are ramming it down our throats and making technical comparisons between India and the West and Europe that are absolutely 100% invalid. So we have a challenge, a big problem. And when you add the censorship into the mix, along with propaganda, you've got a pretty toxic combination. So as I mentioned before, you can see the link, uh, not a bad idea to join up with Odyssey and subscribe to my channel there, because even I, <laughs> the paragon of science data and clarity, have actually had videos removed, including one with Professor Emeritus Beda Stadler, the vaccine pope of Europe, right? An industry pharma guy. Uh, but nonetheless, he didn't say the right things, so it was taken down. So Odyssey, I'd suggest to see all the data without censorship uh, as and when that occurs. And uh, thank you. Hopefully this clarified India and brings some reality, uh, honesty, ethics, uh, data integrity. But again, the word reality brings reality back to the party. Thank you. And just a reminder that I do need support to continue putting together all of this content and at patreon.com forward slash Ivor Cummins or for PayPal, please see the description below this video or the pinned comment and you can do a one-off or a monthly support. So I'd really appreciate that guys and keep me getting the science out there and countering perhaps the more biased corporate type science. Thank you.